Thanks for staying with us. Of course, you're watching Fin Week Money Matters. This is the show that helps you manage your finances. Now, this a time of the year is definitely synonymous with the term shop till you drop. But the local interest rates on the up and global economic growth being dampened, South African consumers are well advised to carefully consider their spending habits, especially with the festive or rather binge spending season upon us. Lerato Masangu, the founder of Power Money Club, uh, joins me right here in our studios in San while Peter Dempsey, the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of ASISA, joins us from our Cape Town studios to discuss how we can better manage our money during this festive season. Lerato, let me start with you. A lot of the times people tend to think that women are going to go there, buy, my, uh, buy clothes, buy shoes, uh, whatever it is that it may, it may be. Why do you think it's so important to just not fall into that temptation uh, this coming festive season? The thing is, um, we need money for everyday living. So if you splurge your money in December, you're not going to have any money left in January. And you know January is a really long month. You need to pay school fees, registration fees. So it, it's very important that you keep you stick to a budget. Yeah, you've got to be thinking ahead. Peter, let me come to you in Cape Town. Uh, of course, uh, later on today, we'll be looking at those non-farm payroll numbers that are due to come out of the US, uh, wondering if things are going to be looking a little bit better for us next year. Would you say the outlook is just as subdued as it has been this year? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that, sorry. Just talking about the outlook from a consumer perspective, uh, would you say it's going to be just as difficult a year next year as what this year has proven to be? Uh, I, I believe it will be. You know, if you if you look at the uh, figures that we get from the South African Reserve Bank, the South African consumers uh, have a debt to income ratio of 77%, which means that 77 cents in each rand effectively is used to service debt. With the recent uh, interest rate increases and the prospect of further increases, I think it's going to be a tough uh, year or two ahead for, for consumers, most certainly. Mm. Now, what are some of the practical steps that we can take as consumers? Um, a lot of us will maybe get a bonus or 13th check. What would your advice be on how to spend this money? Okay, so for um, I'm speaking on a personal uh, level. It's always best to do but it that way. <laughs> <laughs> what I would do with my bonus is I would invest it in a group saving scheme, such as a stock fall. So how you would use that is you would use the money in the, in the event that you, you need it. So, but also it's very important that you identify the, the stock fall that, that's suitable for you. So you find stock falls such as uh, revolving stock fall where there's, there's constant uh, circulation of money amongst the members. Oh, and then the other bit of my money, I would obviously use it in January for that, those ad additional expenses. Uh, so, uh, Peter, we heard from Lerato here talking about uh, one way in which you can spend uh, money wisely. Maybe just take us through some of the other suggestions that uh, you can see our consumers using, some practical advice for us on that front. I think that uh, for those who are lucky enough to, to get a bonus this year, uh, I would suggest that the first thing to do is to put aside a little bit of that money for uh, some good Christmas cheer or some good festive season cheer if you celebrate Christmas because I think people do need to reward themselves but I'd be very strict about how much I put aside and the balance of the bonus I would use to pay off uh, any ex what I would call expensive debt that I may have so credit cards, store cards, personal loans uh, and, and try and reduce that because that is the, the thing that is killing many people and is going to be the challenge for next year with the interest rate increases. Mm. Is it possible to get that balance? Uh, Peter said that maybe you can, it's, and it's important to reward yourself and you were nodding. I guess I've had, a, I've had a very rough year, so I should reward myself, but also being prudent. I mean, you know, is that something that you can do? Or maybe what advice do you have on uh, tightening your belt? I always say that it's unfair that you pay your debtors before you pay yourself. So yes, it is important to reward yourself because you work for it. But so if you if you do that, obviously you would leave some uh, some of the money to pay yeah. off your your, your 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 things such as your credit card. So yes, it it, it will take time. It's not a 
something that you learn overnight. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lengthy process and, and you have to keep doing it until you find the right uh, balance. Uh, Peter, I just want to go back to some of the options that we've got in terms of investing. Um, let's look at asset classes. You mentioned the interest rates are definitely on the up. And I did mention the fact that we will be watching the US Federal Reserve later on today. So given asset classes, do you think it's just best to keep your money in cash? Well, obviously, cash has got the big advantage of security. So it's not subject to volatility. Uh, and it is a safe haven and, and certainly cash has got a place in everyone's investment portfolio. I think one needs to also acknowledge that uh, certainly over the last you know, 50 years, uh, cash has not outperformed inflation. So if you're looking at the longer term, I do believe that it is important to have equity exposure and there are different uh, types of products that can offer you a balanced sort of fund where you've got a portion of cash, you've got different asset classes in the fund. So I would strongly suggest that for the longer term, one does need to have equity exposure uh, other than just having cash in your, in your portfolio. Mm. Now, I thought, what are maybe some of the other pieces of advice that you may have for someone? I know you spoke from a personal uh, perspective, talking about collective investment or pooling uh, your funds together. What are maybe been some of the other you know, suggestions and, and questions that people have come to you uh, regarding savings this, uh, this festive season? Okay, so the important thing is that you need to have a budget. You need to, to plan your, your ex expenditure. So if you plan that as early as October, then you really will not feel uh, uh, the, the pinch on your pocket. So if you have a, a, a planned budget, I think you, you are set. And the other thing, you need to draw up a list of your expenses, know exactly how much you're going to spend on certain items, mm -hmm. things such as gifts, um, going on holiday, wedding gifts, and all those things. Peter, I just want to uh, come to you again, just uh, looking at uh, different things that we should be looking at. Er earlier on in the conversation, we were talking to the CFO of Satrix now, uh, combining uh, you know, easy equities and Satrix together. Um, but then looking at the equity space, yes, you did say that cash doesn't always uh, outperform inflation. The retail space, I mean, we've been having this argument with a number of analysts about its attractiveness. Would you still be looking at that particular sector as being something that would be attractive? I think that, that to pick a particular sector within the economy always carries some risk with it because obviously retailers are, are seasonal in some respects. So I think in the retail space, if you look at those uh, composite retailers who have got clothing, perhaps furniture, white goods, and food, you probably have a little bit of a balanced kind of uh, uh, holding. If you're looking at food only, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure in terms of the drought that we've got coming up, mm -hmm. uh, which is already starting to affect food supplies. And I think that's going to have an impact on food prices. And if food prices go up, uh, it becomes very difficult for retailers to maintain their margins uh, because they don't want to get to a point where they're outpriced as far as their, their customers are concerned. Uh, and if it's a, a, a retailer that focuses on um, sort of lifestyle goods, uh, I, I'm still of the view that, that 2016 is going to be a tight year for, for consumers. So I think I'd look at the retail sector, you know, with an element of caution. But that said, uh, it is cyclical. And if you do want to go into retail, you're prepared to wait it out for a year or two or three. I believe that like with everything, the cycle will turn again. Well, uh, we've had it. Some uh, good, solid advice for this particular uh, festive season. Make sure that you've got a budget. Uh, do reward yourself and also maybe look at different asset classes. Thank you so much to my guests, Lerato Mathangu, founder of Power Money Club. And of course, Peter Dempsey is the deputy chief executive of ASISA, uh, joining us live from our studios in Cape Town. Well, uh, that's it for this week's edition of Fin Week. And it's also uh, that's it for this week's edition of Fin Week for the year. We'll be seeing you again next year on the 14th of January. But have a fantastic uh, festive season. Do take care and, of course, make sure that you do take care of your money. But you can uh, get yourself a copy of uh, Fin Week. It's available at your nearest store or you can also find it online. From myself, Demisha Greater, and the team, have a, have a good one.